you light up my world like nobody else. I'm gonna show you some spicy books for yourselves that did not go together at all. I'm sorry, One Direction. Hello shiny face, hello besties. I am back with another spicy recommendation video. I'm going to be discussing some of my favorite spicy reads. Now I included several different spice ratings in this. Like some of them are very spicy. Some of them are not that spicy, but there's still spice in them because I feel like everybody has a different scale when talking about spicy books. Kind of just wanted to include a little bit of everything, just a little bit for everyone. And all of them are books I love. So I will be sharing them with you. I did a part one to this video, I think like eight months ago. I'll link it in the description so you guys can watch it. I've also done a video with no spice at all in books as well, if you guys wanna watch that. And let me know if you want a part two. You don't judge here. If you wanna read spice, you read spice. If you don't wanna read spice, you don't read spice. It is completely up to you. I've also said the word spice way too much and it is only like barely a minute into this video. Let's begin before I say spice one more time. <laughs> First up, I have my Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. This follows Miles and Taylor in its dual POV. Taylor's a second grade teacher and Miles is a bounty hunter. Taylor is on vacation with her brother and she walks into the house she's supposed to be vacationing at and finds a dead body, a dead man, a dead man in the house she's supposed to be in. That's very inconvenient. Who wants a dead guy in your vacation home? Not I, not me, and, and not Taylor either. <laughs> Anyway, a bounty hunter gets hired to solve the case and Taylor thinks that because she has watched enough true crime documentaries and has listened to true crime podcasts, she can definitely solve this crime as well. So she wants to help Miles. Basically, Taylor is me watching Criminal Minds and thinking I can solve crimes. This book was so funny. I think that was my favorite part of it. It was spicy and funny. Like Taylor is hilarious. And even though Miles is not funny, he's still funny without trying. You know what I mean? The Grumpy Sunshine really served here. They were so sweet. It is a very short book, so expect it to be very like insta-lovey because you gotta get to in, you know, 290 pages. So they do fall in love quite fast, but the spice was amazing. It was so funny. I really liked Taylor, really liked Miles, and Tessa Bailey's just like fun books. You know what I mean? Like the rom-com really gives. So I would highly recommend this one. Next up, I have Blindside by Candy Steiner. This follows Clay and Gianna, also do a POV. And Clay is on the football team and Gianna is the PR person for said football team. Clay has had a longtime girlfriend who recently leaves him behind, poor Clay. And Gianna has this guy that she's been trying to get his attention, but he does not notice her at all. So Clay and Gianna come up with this plan where they're going to fake date so that the people they want can notice them. Clay will get his girlfriend back and Gianna will get this guy to finally notice her. But of course, fake dating never really goes that well, does it? If you like the deal, I think you'll really like this book because they're very, very similar. It was so cute and the spice is really good. Like guys, he literally reads some of her spicy scenes on her books so that he can learn. I really liked the spice in this because it wasn't too much, but it also wasn't too little. It felt like the perfect amount to go along with the story. And it felt very intimate between the characters. Like, I don't know, it gave a lot to the story, I think. It wasn't just spice for the sake of spice, you know? I don't know, I love this. Blindside, definitely underrated. Candy Steiner, please read this one. It is the second book in the series, but they're all interconnected standalone, so you can read them separately. Next, I have The Roommate by Rosie Danan. This took me so long to read, I'm ashamed of how long it took me, but when I finally read it, I really enjoyed it. It's in third period. POV, so if you want to listen to it, I would highly recommend that because third POV is usually kind of hard to get through, but it follows Clara and Josh and Clara leaves her house and goes to move in with this guy that she's had a crush on forever. But when she gets there, the guy is no longer there. He rented his apartment out to somebody else. So she has a new roommate and that roommate is Josh who happens to be an adult film star, dare I say it. Um, <laughs> I really liked how sex positive this book was. It wasn't just like fun and romantic and sweet or any of that, but there was so much sex positivity in it, which I loved. I really liked Josh. He was such a golden retriever boy, but at the same time, he's a porn star. So there's a lot of different sides to him. I liked Clara just in general. I thought it was a great book. I liked the side characters too. It wasn't like a life-changing book, but the spicy scenes were fun. And just in general, I think it would be worth a listen if you want to try it out or even a read if you don't mind third person, but I know a lot of people don't like third POV me included, <laughs> but the roommate, Rosie Donnan. Speaking of a book that took me way too long to finally read, The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. Um, <laughs> this book was on my TBR for way, way too long. You know what, I love the series. I love all three books in the Kiss Quotient trilogy. I think I rated all of them five stars. It's The Kiss Quotient, The Bride Test, and The Heart Principle. I'm just 
holding the kiss quotient because that was the first one I read and I was pleasantly surprised with the spice because when you look at a cover like this, you're like, oh, this isn't gonna be spicy at all. But it was, it was quite spicy. Not the spiciest book I've ever read by any means, but the spice in it was very good in my opinion. It follows Stella and Michael, another one that is third POV, so you can listen if you'd like to. Stella does not know how to date, how to kiss, how to be with a guy. So she hires Michael, who's a male escort to teach her. And let me just say she learns. She learns, she learns so fast, Stella. Wow, Michael's such a great teacher and Stella's such a great learner. <laughs> I adore this book. I adore Stella, I adore Michael, I loved the spice, I loved how funny it was, how sweet it was. And also there's representation in it too and diversity. Stella has Asperger's, which I really liked seeing in a book. Just, I would highly recommend the Kiss Quotient trilogy by Helen Wong. The Bride Test is my favorite, but the Kiss Quotient is so good and so is the Heart Principle and they are quite spicy. This one's a little bit of a controversial take y'all, but it's Block Shot by Kennedy Ryan. Um, this is the second book in the Hoops trilogy. Now, the Hoops trilogy in itself is not at all cute sports romances. I've said that so many times, but I will keep saying it. Every single time I hold up the Hoop series, I have to remind you that it's not cute sports romances, especially Long Shot, okay? But Block Shot is very spicy. This one is definitely the lightest one. Block Shot was kind of the one in the middle that had more spice, more fluff, more romance, and less of like the really deep topics, even though it definitely included some as well. So please search for trigger warnings even for block shot, but this one is very, very spicy. Jared and Banner, the reason why I say it's a controversial take is because this book has a lot of cheating. So if you are not into the cheating trope, please do not read this because you will not like it. However, I really enjoyed it. I just thought Jared was so funny. And even though in real life, he would be a terrible human being, in books, I was like, oh, fun. <laughs> But Jared and Banner, they met in college and he always liked her, she always liked him. There's something that happens and they don't talk for many years. And then now they're both sports agents years later and their paths cross again. So a little bit of a second chance romance. There's plus size representation in this one as well with Banner. I, I, I really like it, but there is cheating. So please go into it expecting that. Please search up trigger wings, but it is quite spicy. Definitely the only one that I would say is the spiciest out of the Hoops trilogy would be Block Shot and then there's spice and hook shot as well but long shot don't go into it wanting that y'all even though there is spice and long shot i couldn't even focus on the spice because i was so traumatized by the rest of the book so block shot if you want some spice some fun some fluff but search for trigger warnings i don't know why i put this book in here because i rated it like three stars or something but listen the spice was good so let me explain myself corrupt by penelope douglas <laughs> This follows Erica and Michael, and I'm sure you guys know because everybody has read Devil's Night besides me. I only read the first two books so far, and I don't even know how I feel about this one. Like, I didn't even really like it all that much, but I liked it, you know? Like, it was fun, but also, what the fuck happened in it? You know what I mean? I don't even really know how to explain the plot to you. It's literally just four horsemen. Yes, they call themselves the horsemen. Um, they they... How do I explain this? They they live in, th in Thunder Bay and they basically fuck shit up on Devil's Night every year. And Erica just happened to be there. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this book to you. Just read it if you want, but it is very, very dark. Um, the shit that happens in here, I was like, what the fuck, what the fuck? But that is what dark romance is. So if you want to read it, go ahead. I'm just saying the spice is immaculate, but the rest of the book, Questionable, questionable. Just like Credence by Penelope Douglas too. Credence, I think I rated two stars. I will never, ever stop talking about how much I didn't like Credence, but at the same time, the spice was so good. <laughs> the spice in Credence is phenomenal, but the book in itself, yeah. And that's kind of how I feel about Corrupt as well. But I did like kind of the plot in this book. There was a lot more that I liked in this than Credence. Credence, I don't recommend, I don't like that one, but Corrupt, I actually quite liked it. It was entertaining, even though I don't agree with anything the characters do. It's entertaining and fun, and the spice was was very good. The sauna scene was was fun. I did like that. So search up trigger warnings. Heavy, heavy trigger warnings. If you want to read corrupt, I can't speak for the rest of the series because I haven't I haven't read the rest. Um, I only read corrupt and hideaway, but the spice was definitely here for this one. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put this away. Let me put this away. I, I feel I feel weird even holding it. Um, <laughs> now I have Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. This is another book I've talked quite a bit about lately. Um, 
I read it recently and I just love it so much. One of my favorite sports romances right now. It is a hockey player and an ice skater. It is grumpy sunshine, but reverse. It's Nathan and Anastasia and it's dual POV. I adored this book, y'all. Basically, like something happens to the rink at their college and the ice skaters and the hockey players have to practice together. And then something happens to her partner. And so he offers to be her partner so that they can practice and that she can make it to um, the competition she wants to make it to. I, I love this. I love this so much. Was it long? Yes, absolutely. It's literally like what, 400? Yep, 420 pages. But for some reason, I did not get bored for a single second. I adored it. And the spice slapped me in the face. Like it quite literally came up to me and was like, psh, 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 psh. yeah, yeah, it was, it came out of nowhere because with a cover like this, I did not expect it. Hannah Grace, hello. I did not expect this at all, but the spice was so good, so good. One of those that you like reread just to be like, whoa, did that really happen? It did. It did happen. Icebreaker, Hannah Grace, search of trigger warnings. Another book I will never stop recommending is Flawless by Elsie Silver, y'all. If you like The Longest Ride, the movie, read this. I know The Longest Ride is also a book, but I haven't read it, so can't speak for the book. But speaking for the movie, I really liked it. Flawless follows Summer and Rhett and it's dual POV and Rhett is a bull rider and Summer is the PR person sent to keep him in line when he kind of fucks up. The mouth on this cowboy, y'all. The mouth, okay, Heartless is the second one in this series. You can read them separately. Um, they're interconnected to standalones. And that one as well is so spicy. Like both of them are a fun kind of spice where there's just enough plot and just enough spice to keep you entertained the entire time. And the mouth on these men, the mouth. The summertime is always like, oh my God, what did you say, sir? Back up, the fuck? <laughs> I don't like milk at all, but I did like the whipped cream in this book. Okay. <laughs> I'm putting it away. I don't know if you need to search up trigger warnings for this one. I don't really remember. I feel like search it up just in case, but it's definitely not a heavy book. It's definitely more on the fun side, very spicy, um, not a lot of deep topics, but search up trigger warnings just in case. But I love Flawless. It is so good, y'all. I like Heartless as well. Um, this one is Age Gap, Grumpy Sunshine, Nanny, Single Dad Romance. I didn't like it as much as Flawless, but I still liked it. So I would recommend both. If you want fun and spice, these are very good. Now I have Ignite by Melanie Harlow. Um, <laughs> There is a shirtless man on the cover. And now listen, they just released though the discreet covers. So if you want the discreet cover for this, I, I would recommend that because they're so cute. And I have the man cover, which is fine. It's fine. We love that for me. Anyway, Ignite follows Winnie and Dex and it's dual POV as well. And it's single dad, grumpy sunshine, age gap, neighbors, forced proximity kind of vibe. I didn't believe in love anymore until I met you kind of thing. Yes, it served all of that. Um, Winnie is this girl that gave up on finding her happily ever after because she always falls for guys way too quickly. So now she doesn't want to fall for anyone anymore. And then she meets her neighbor who's a firefighter and a single dad, Dex. He has two little girls and he doesn't believe in love at all. He just doesn't want anything with anyone. But then he meets Winnie. This was so fun. This was one of those that you read when you were in a slump because I tried to read like five different books before I picked up Ignite and nothing was clicking. And then I picked up Ignite on Kindle Unlimited. Cured, 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 just like that. Melanie Harlow can do no wrong. While I'm on Melanie Harlow, Irresistible and Frenched by her are also very good and Drive Me Wild. All of those I would recommend. Irresistible is literally just like Ignite because it's with Winnie's dad. So it's single dad, except he has three little girls, I'm pretty sure. And then it's the nanny and it's grumpy sunshine as well. And small town, age gap, literally ignite in a different font is irresistible. I loved irresistible. It's more like cozy and fun. Whereas ignite was more hot and spicy, you know, both of them were so good. Track me wild is another one by Melanie Harlow. That's small town, a different series, spicy as well. And then you've got Frenched. This one is the spiciest one I've read out of all of these. Frenched is a whole different level. Literally you have this woman who um, gets her wedding called off. And so she decides to go to the honeymoon anyway, but by herself. And she meets a guy there who decides to show her around. Show her around everywhere, if you know what I mean. Very, very spicy. Very, very insta-lovey also because it's like set in the span of a week or so. But if you want spice, that one will deliver. And then if you want more story with spice, I would say these other three. Melanie Harlow. The last one I have on the list today, Shadi Bays, is one that really took me by surprise because I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. And with a cover like this, I was very shocked 
with the contents inside of this book. And that is Faking with Benefits by Lily Gold. This is a reverse harem. Reverse harem means one girl and several guys. So if that's not for you, maybe this one, you won't like it. But at the same time, I wouldn't say reverse harem is my favorite thing. I don't necessarily look for it, but rom-com reverse harems are actually very fun. And this one is that. It's like friends to lovers, but make it three guys instead of one. <laughs> You have Layla, Zach, Luke, and Josh, and you have all of their POVs. And Layla is neighbors of these three guys right here. And um, she doesn't know what's wrong with her. She can never get a guy to actually go out with her longer than just one date. And then these nice little fellas decide they're gonna help her. They're gonna all date her and, and see where it goes. What a great idea. I also have this podcast that they're going to be doing the experiment on. Um, their podcast is basically like another one is overtaking it and getting more money than them. So they think it's a good idea to throw in a new experiment. And the experiment is with Lila where um, they all date her and kind of, you know, document the entire thing for the public. So I really, really liked that part because you not only get all four POVs, but you also get like Twitter threads of what everybody's thinking about the relationships. And you get to see the podcast being filmed in a little bit of the script. I don't know. It was really, really fun. So, so funny. A lot of plot and so much spice. So much spice in the best way. Like I said, reverse harems are not my thing, I would say. Like I will read them. If someone says that a book is good, I will try it out, but it's not something I look for. But Lily Gold is an author I will always recommend for Rose Harems. She writes very fun, fluffy, funny, and spicy. Please search up trigger warnings. It does have some deeper topics in it. Do you want me to get the other ones? Please hold. I'll go get the other ones just so that you can really get the point. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. I need to show you this. I can't find it. I found it. I found it. I found it, y'all. Not to worry. Not just took me a whole last decade, but I found it. I found it. Do we like my Grinch pantaloons? These are the other ones I also have by Lily Gold that I haven't read yet. So I don't know how good they are, but I am gonna read them soon because I love their covers and they're all reverse harem. So we've got three Swedish mountain men, not just one, but three. We love that. Then we've got Nanny for the Neighbors. How cute. Um, and then we have Triple Duty Bodyguards. What's better than one bodyguard? I'll tell you three. Lily Gold definitely, definitely serves on <laughs> the comedy and the plot and the romance and the men. Many, many men. Not just one, not just two, but three. Because one man isn't enough. One man definitely isn't enough. We, we need all of them. Here. Ta-da! Okay. The end. Let me know if you want to see another part to this video, Shadi Bays. I have plenty of spicy reads that I can show you. These are just some of my faves. Watch part one if you haven't yet, because if I didn't include a book in here, I probably included it in there. Let me know if you want to see more. And if you want to see another part to the non-spicy reads, I can give you that as well. Goodbye. I love you. <laughs>